evening everyone hello how are you all doing happy easter <laughs> Right, How's everyone that. doing? Pat a day on man. Well, I think we've got um a really choice topic for you. <laughs> Just like <laughs> Dale. Oh. Hiya, hiya Claire, did you make it over? It's good to see you. And Yvonne, oh everyone have a good Easter weekend. We all, all in them. going forward. Cool. Still can't get used to that. Oh, it's crazy, isn't it? I just wish you'd leave the time alone. Hi, hey, Brum Vixen. Lisa. Hi. Yeah, I, th oh, I think um, we're in chocolate comas in our house at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I did get any Easter eggs this year. Oh, well, me, me girls have got... I was just like, just go and pick your own one. They're, they're at that age now where they don't believe in the Easter Bunny and all that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just kind of shady. Um, and then they, they came out and bought me one as well. So I was like, oh, damn it. So I'm going to have to eat it now. But then they've, they've also been at buying me chocolate. So <laughs> hi, Mandy. You're fun. Too much chocolate cake. Um, I will just say quickly, if you can hear bubbling in the background, it's my fish tank. I've got little babies growing and I've moved the mic away from it, but you can still really hear it. Oh, <laughs> so, I thought it was your washing, washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> Are you candies? You okay? Yeah. Um, yeah. So sorry about the other day. Uh, we was meant to do a members live, but we had awful weather down here and it knocked our internet out. So we can oh. but it's all sorted and then it's been manic since then, so we haven't really been able to get on. Hi Funky. Hey Funky, you okay. Yeah, it's it's hard for us to go live as well when um the kids are off, so we're like exhausted as well. You're like constantly on the go, aren't you? Just like gotta think of everything all the time, you know. You're out your routine and everything. Yeah, you've yeah. already had yours off a week, haven't you? Ours yeah. Ours on Thursday, so yeah, we're yeah, on we've only had four days of it, but <laughs> not good already. Hi, Amy. But, yeah. Um, Hi, Amy. So we do have Evelina's um, inquest. <gasps> we are in the middle of transcribing it at the moment. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh, my God. I'm gonna really tease you now. It, it Evelyn is um the lady um that worked for the vets and um she was in Nikki's vet um in, in that chain. She worked for the chain of vets um and she basically was found in a London hotel room with wounds. If you're not familiar with the case, um Evelina Sasak. So um yeah, we've just been going through um the inquest and um we're gonna get it um ready um to again coroner's orders we're not allowed to play it publicly um we're not allowed to publish it publicly <laughs> um what we have to do is basically get the facts and we'll paraphrase it for you like what we did with nikki's um and you know just so that you can be aware of what happened and um, there's a lot more to it than what was reported in the newspaper a hell of a lot more detail that we can give you. Um, right, so it, it, it's it absolutely so chuffed to have got hold of it, to be honest. Yeah, you're having the fun job this time of transcribing it, aren't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and, and it's not. It's <laughs> it's, bi it's bilingual as well. So that means that um, when you put it on the, on the tran transcriber machine, basically it... Um, picks up the English and then it also um picks up Polish and says what it thinks it's saying in English and you get some really random words. Some of them are a bit spooky to be fair that come out. You're a bit like oh, you know <laughs> I was a bit yeah, I, haven't, I, I haven't listened to it yet. But um yeah I will do. I I'm leaving you to do that job and G.I. Joe's yeah. doing her part on the transcribing of the Polish part so 
once that's done, I will listen. <laughs> oh, so, oh, bless you, I, I'm just going to have to transcribe and translate. <laughs> Um, yeah. But yeah, just I to make do. sure that just to see what the family have been actually told, because then um, they they didn't have um, all the documents translated for them ahead of the the coroner's inquest, so they were kind of dependent on this translator um, person. Um, so it's, it was quite difficult for them. I, I felt anyway. Yeah. So. Um... We're in the middle of doing that, so we will, as soon as all that's done, we will do a live of that. Yeah, um, it shouldn't be too long. Willow loved water, all spaniels love water. The dog must have been away from the place that they put her in the water because Willow would have picked up her scent if she went in at the bench. The thing, the reason why we're doing Willow today um, is because we actually took our friends um spring a spaniel for a walk today and he is a spitting image of willow and it was just fascinating to see him out with you know I, this is the second time i've met him and uh we he let us take him for a walk he was off the lead um he kept coming back to check where we were and it was fascinating to watch him i, I was just literally grinning from ear to ear oh. watching him the whole way and um we went down by the stream and he went straight in no problem just literally ran straight in and jumped in the water <laughs> so that's a text on the way back it's like get a towel ready <laughs> but yeah look, this is him this is him living his best life today Oh, oh it's that is a proper doggy smile if I've ever seen one. <laughs> wow. Would you but look at that? Literally. Hi, Ellie. Um, he was literally running ragged so hey, fast. Ellie. And where we walk, obviously, you know, there's some rabbit's holes there and, and stuff like that. So he got the smell of the rabbits and he was just running and to and fro and all the, uh, the farming stock like the not the livestock but the um plants and stuff they were really high today so we could see was every now and then he's back jumping up where he was running through <laughs> oh yes so oh, it was interesting such an energetic too. breeze aren't they the springers they really like just go for it you know they just now you see them now you don't look, here it goes oh. but no, he was absolutely amazing and for the first, like, bearing in mind it was the first time we've took him out, um, only second time of meeting him, and he was good as gold. You know, he, he appeared back every now and then to see where we were, to make sure we were still there, and then off he went again. And that's someone that he's, he doesn't know very well. Oh, oh Dean, Dean... You got a cocker spaniel who's nine months old. You took him down to the Western Supermare Beach, is that? And he jumped straight into the outside pool on the beach. Oh. Yeah. But it was interesting to see like their temperament. So like we did get a chance to hide or anything so he would find us because obviously bearing in mind that was the first time I took him out. The last thing I wanted to do was go back to my friend and say, I can't find him. I've lost um, him. <laughs> but we actually had a style there as well. And he he would not go through the style until I climbed over. He waited for me. And once I climbed over, he just literally went through the gap. That was there. Mm. He did jump over it. He just went through. He found a way through, and that was it. It was through. Oh look, here we go. I've got the video. See, look, he's waiting for I to, for me to get over, and then off he goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like I love how we bunny hops as well. Thank you. Oh, but, oh um, I've, got, I've got two dogs. Um, mine are um. <laughs> Mine, mine are crossbreeds, but a small dog, um, half Chihuahua, half um, Cresties, and oh my God, they are like nutters. They are just like, run, they run around, they, they bark at people. Um, 
they they're just uh, absolutely nuts. They're about they're about three now. But hey, hey, volunteer, you okay? You made me laugh, volunteer. Right, I've got to... <laughs> you posting naughty things on X. <laughs> 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 oh my god I, I i it was funny i i, I can't say any more about that <laughs> but it was funny here he is jumping in the water oh and the other side of the um this little stream there's like i would say the a drop probably about the same height as where they believe nikki fell in and uh he had no trouble. He was straight out. He is yeah, adorable. That, does, that, that looks kind of like not far off the um Oh my dog's come to say hello as well. <laughs> <laughs> <Here Marquis. laughs> well uh, I'm probably his best friend now because we had roast lamb yesterday and um I gave him the bone with a little bit of lamb meat on it as well. So he was literally in heaven yesterday. So, oh, <laughs> gonna look, you guys like some walkies and then a bone. He, he won't yeah. want to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the thing is, is like we can't really have a dog anymore because we're always going away, go swimming now. Um, where well, we're always going away, so it's nice to be out i i missed going out to go for a walk like that and it, we've got such lovely areas around here where you can walk <clears throat> so uh Look, it was lovely oh, but this is the bank in there, the isn't it? Is that deep yeah. Water on the picture? yeah so this is the bank here obviously there's a load of grass on there now but i would say it's probably about the same you can't really see it on the photo but it's i would say it's probably about the same height it's by the bed chair, yeah. Uh, Did you oh, remember oh, what I mul multi multi <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of them. Uh, yeah. On Saturday. Oh, my, my dogs are three as well. Like they, they just they, they, they come out of puppy mode when they get to about three, don't they? And they're, they're a bit more chilled out. I've, I've noticed my two. We still yeah. have the moments though. My two have been swimming today actually in the ponds, in the duck pond, and they fucking stink. So Honest to God, they jumped on my bed and I was like, whoa! It was like disgusting. I was like, the, 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 my daughter's just took them for a shower earlier on. It's like, they're not coming in this house. Hi, Katrin. So it's, I'm, I'm not Maltese Terrier dad and the toy poo. Oh, that's a, oh! And cockers don't chill till ten years. Wow! Oh my god! <laughs> ten years. <gasps> yeah, okay. they, they are the high maintenance dogs, aren't they? Um, yeah. Cocker, um, and springers. Um, yeah, I think my friend had one. Um, Oh, he was—he was—he was a cross between a border collie, a, a collie as well. So he had um, the two breeds inside him, and he was just like wanted walkies all the time and everything. Um, I used to—I—I I finish work um, or have a day off work, and I just take him out when on my day out. It's it stayed with my best mate, so I just sort of go and have a key, let myself in, take the dog out, and then they. Um, he, they'd know when I'd been round because the dog would actually be tired, <laughs> like really, like worn out, like <gasps> oh, in a in a coma. See, so I used to take like taking them up the mountains. Yeah, I I, I do miss the dog walks. I I used to always walk my dog, all, like and be out for hours, and it was lovely. Um, Dean, we haven't actually spoke to Peter for a little while. Um, We've just been so up in it at the moment that we haven't had time. But I think after Easter holidays, I'll probably touch base with him again. Yeah, I think um, I think there's a lot going on in the background in terms of um, releasing the sonar as well. Like, so I think he's just trying to make sure that every, you know he doesn't get himself in any trouble and stuff and. 
and make sure that everything's done properly in the right way. Yeah, no, exactly. Rum fixing, honey's very attached to me, permanently attached. <laughs> oh, that's when you can't move when they're laying on you. No, honey, off. honey by name and honey by nature, then. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, oh. This was the stream that we said that was flooded. Remember on the last live? Oh, Look how no, much really? different it looks. Yeah, gosh, the water's well gone down now, hasn't it? It feels still very, very soggy over there, but it was just lovely to get out and not be scared to fall down a rabbit hole. <laughs> oh. And that's it, yeah. You don't want to be sort of stepping in there and the rabbit holes and all the other water and stuff. Yeah. Oh, but no, it was very, yeah. very interesting to see for ourselves what a Springer Spaniel's like. And he's only a year and a half to two years old. So he's not very old at all. And no, he's still be in puppy mode at that age. Yeah. Yeah, um, um, Ivan, Ivan saying, um, so your cocker got upset when your ex shouted at you, and they're very sensitive to shouting. Yeah, yeah, they do, they don't like it, do the um dogs when you if you there's an argument in the house and stuff. Um, yeah, my dog used to hate it. Me, me, and um, my partner used to um play fight with each other. Um, and we used to just to sit to test the dogs to see whose side they was to go up. <laughs> and, <we're> like, <laughs> and they always used to go on my side. I was like, yes. The person but, that feeds them. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, to be fair, he used to do more for them than me, but I, I used to walk him. I, they used to see me and think walkies because I used to always. Um, they used to carry my trainers and put them back down by my feet. That was our like hint, hint, taking us out for a walk. There, so we we had a uh, back then. It was a um, pointer, a um, short head German pointer, and we had a um, terrier as well, border terrier. Um, so it was a little and large show going on with the dogs, and um, they both had completely different personalities. The, the little dog used to want to fight all the other dogs in the area, so we'd have to keep her on the lead. And then the pointer would be quite happily, you know, walk next to me at the side. So, so she was really good. Oh, um, but oh, they, they, oh, they, they were so funny though. But when we play fought with each other, and um, they'd sort of like nip at the trouser legs. You know, they, they wouldn't like vehicles, but they knit the trowels lag. They stop. Uh, um, but they, they don't like shouting and stuff. Volunteer springers are water mad. They have webbed feet. They are water mad. And this is why I'm quite surprised that Willow didn't go in the water. Because as soon as like any springer that i know but as soon as um he he saw the water he was straight in it see <laughs> oh there's no mess no hesitation now whatsoever is it? is that where your friends takes takes him out for a walk normally does he know the area yeah he apparently he was a bit too scared to get in there because she said to me she did he just get straight in i said yeah no problems he was in there before we even got there and um, she said he used to be scared. He didn't want to get in there. But he was in swimming a lot. Oh, he looks happy as Larry there, doesn't he? Mm. Yeah, my, my two will... Um, but they, I take them um, to an um, an area that's by the River D, and it's um, it can get quite deep, but there's, it, there's like an area where it's all shale, and um, it's like a shale beach. And they get they go there and then they like to sort of just sort of um jump around there and then they get a drink out drink of river water and everything. Um it, uh, yeah, they and they, they were they they have they, they can swim um and, and they don't mind getting wet, especially on a hot day, though you know they've, they've quite enjoyed sort of jumping in water when it's hot. But um it, this time of year I don't know, it's a little bit 
But they've not been, they've been in the water today, mines, in the duck ponds. Yeah. But that's the thing, you know. I've always known, like, even my dog, he was a lab cross staff. And if there was water there, he was straight in it. No worries. So I was very surprised that Willow was bone dry and off the lead. Yeah, that it, I, that's that made me suspicious. As in, like, I I didn't think that she'd gone in the water because she was because Willow was dry and it, and she was because she was trying to sort of um she was running between the the gate and the stile, wasn't she? And yeah. where it's fenced off as well. It was like as if she wanted to go further on down that way to so like that, that would take her to, towards Hughes, wouldn't it? Yeah, and it's not and like you would have to put something in the water for a dog to go in there. You know, you don't say to them, right, go on in, in the water, and they go in. <coughs> they literally, no. you know, especially springers, they, they will go in there because they love it. Oh, he looks so happy though. He's just like running around, isn't he? And... Yeah. They are strong dogs though. Coy, yeah. pulling me like anything today. But yeah. Oh. Just... Well, my, my friend's dog was like that. And then um, I used to sit in um, the armchair in their living room. And he used to sit behind me. Uh, and it's quite a high armchair, um, the, the, the head area. And he'd sort of sat, he'd be sort of sat on my shoulders like a parrot. <laughs> like, is he a parrot or a dog? <laughs> it was just, oh, he was crazy. They said I was his favourite non-family member. <laughs> so he used to just yeah. turn up there and take him out walkies. I took him for his first ever walk as well because they were away on holiday for a weekend and um, his injections had just kicked in. Um, so I was allowed to take him for his first ever walk. And he oh, he's scared of the, the cars and everything, so to carry him. Um, and then like I took him to this um, country park and then... Um, he was, he was oh he was just scared of everything bless his heart but he he loved it he was he was by the time my friend came back and she was able to take him out for a walk um he was he was all right we're walking he, he just got used to it with me just, I took him out on about you know about four or five different walks <laughs> that weekend when I have yeah, them exactly. weather's getting nice as well now for it isn't it <laughs> Yeah, it was, it's better when it's night. It's horrible in the middle of the, the rainy season, and then the dog's looking at you as if to say, like, can we go out? And you're like, no. Yeah. Um, see you for a chat said when Willow was walked in the same area of Paul. So that was the day after, wasn't it? That was on Saturday. Willow became, uh, became anxious when he walked near the gate in the upper field. Willow had no reaction while being walked near the bench, hearsay from PA's friend. I think I remember hearing that. Yeah. But yeah, because the, uh, and P Paul said in his interview that he took Willow out for a walk to see the following day to see if there was a reaction. Like, and he was, he was expecting it near the bench, wasn't he? Yeah. But it wasn't there, was it? Um, volunteer, I think the dog was drugged and saw nothing, hence why the harness was off. It's why they couldn't move her until 10.40. And Penny said the dog was giddy. The thing is, it's like the way, like looking at my friend's dog, the way he was when we was out, you know, he would run off and you couldn't see him. So anything could happen. It was just every now and then he'd just come back and see where we were, and then he'd go off again. Yeah, my two do that. They they always they, they'll go they'll run off ahead, but then they'll always come back and like look for me. Like, oh, they, what they tend to do is like run back to me, run forward a bit further, run back to me, run forward a bit further, and but they're always kind of checking that I'm there and I'm okay. And if I say if I stop for no reason, they they come back and then they they stop <laughs> say what are you doing yeah. mom <laughs> but the thing is it's like the amount of time like he ran off and he wasn't near us anything could have happened in that time so yeah because say if somebody was trying to get to you and i suppose if they um confused your dog you know um distracted your dog 
for maybe a few minutes it's possible isn't it and then dogs like you know you know maybe, maybe just like laying food out or something it could just leave a trail of food for the dog to, to go and find and then the dog realizes like oh i need to go check on mum and then where is mum where's mum gone she vanished what's happened yeah, yeah. I, believe, um, I believe the dog's intuition would have known that if she'd gone in the water I, I believe that because the hearing is so precise as well I think by the sounds of it, it she went in that that would alert the dog oh definitely they would have heard a splash and would have gone to investigate it and especially if she screamed as well that's it yeah it just this is where it's so weird isn't it because you know and, and that type of dog you know as we can see here has got you know no qualms about going in the water and we know that willow's the same we've seen photographs of willow um in the in the river water there as well yeah see you for a chat keith barlow saw willow near pf's house barking absolutely nothing was said about that Oh, it's crazy, isn't it? See, that's what I mean. It's all selective information that's come out. The same with Evelina's case. Yeah, only this... selective information has been released. Like they kept all the the um, witnesses quiet right up till the Nikki's inquest, and they, they changed a few times as well, didn't they? The old witnesses. Yeah. Well, yeah, there were people who've been told that, the, well, you know who, like I'm thinking Jason Rothwell, he was told that he was going to be, he needed to make a statement and that was going to be read out in the coroner's court and that wasn't the case, was it? No. Um, yeah, I saw and some then, who was in police uh, protective custody? Who said that? Would that, would that have been uh, Emma? In See you for chat. Police mentioned on least, at least one occasion someone was in protective custody. Was it ever disclosed who that person was? No. I've never even heard of that. I I had a feeling that um, Emma might have been because she she was getting a lot of um, people harassing her, wasn't she? About different things. Yeah, Jackie heard it was PF. We had all the little lambs out today as well. They are so cute. I love Bahas. No, and they I was all literally me. talking when we was near them. Could it We would shout mint sauce at them. <laughs> oh, oh. I love little lambs, little ones. I wish They're I could just take my home oh. and keep it that small because they are my favourite. It's all such but, tight timeline after Chesham seeing Nick, Nicky. I used to I used to have a house with a, a, a joint garden, right? And then the the lads, um, it was my next door neighbour. I don't think he he was all all with it, right, to be honest. But he bought these two sheep sheep home apparently, and he called them Black and Decker and got them to cut the grass. You know, eat the grass. <laughs> <laughs> he called them Black and Decker. I was like, no way! How can you do that? Um, and I, I said, well, why did you get rid of them then? And he said, well. Uh, everyone kept threatening to keep on eating them and stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> it gets on escaping, apparently. Jay, but, um, you're right there. There is such a tight timeline. But when Chesham left the field, Nikki was still in the lower field, but the other side, so closer to Rowan Water side. So she still had to get round the field and back to the bench. It's yeah. like, yeah, it's very, very tight timeline. Yeah, it have been the psychic. There were reports though that um that the dog was found on the main road barking as well, wasn't there? Um, that over, was right at the um, yeah. 
that was right that was one of the, the the very first reports i read it said that and then the police obviously um made their press release and they didn't they said otherwise so yep no but it is a bit see this mark ansel this isn't this the guy that um becky smith arrested ages ago years and years before and people said they he was related to paul ansel see uh, we've looked into this and we can't find any link with him and paul ansel at all i think they've just got the same surname yeah it they don't live that far away from each other do they as well it's it's not that far you know but it's probably i'm guessing around maybe about a half an hour 40 minute card journey away yeah but it, i i've not found any relation to them at all like not even mm. friends they haven't got no one's linked there's no link between them at all so as so i mentioned in the location i mean that the, it could be like a, a fairly common surname in that area yeah but it's um yeah because it, it, paul hasn't got a, a brother he's got a sister hasn't he yeah uh celia claire chesham seen leaving at allotment lane at 9 18 yeah that's when she got picked up on the cctv See, I wouldn't even say it takes what from the gate to where the CC, she got picked up on CCTV. I wouldn't even say that would take a minute. No, it's it is really like smaller. It's it's so when you watch it on the telly, you're thinking, oh, you know, it'll take you a while to get around there, and it really doesn't. It, it's just kind of like you're blinking, then you 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 know you're seeing about brick building has of you and stuff like that and you the proximity between the bench and the red brick buildings really really close to each other as well you know and and allotment lane's just not far away either really is it no it, it doesn't take long at all it's not Hi, 14 <laughs> hope you're all right oh hey 14 hello 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh but yeah I was going to call this podcast dogging, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Don't trust but you with I, anything. <laughs> I know. I, I thought, gosh, everyone will kill me. Like, oh, <laughs> like, come on here with expectations. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, but yeah, it's, oh, I, the way that willow was just wanting to get over towards hughes though that that really says a lot because it's it's almost as if that that was like where she, where willow was pointing yeah but she but she didn't go in the water and i think if nikki had gone in the water i think she would have followed i'm very very surprised that um willow wasn't wet at all yeah that it it really it really like just doesn't sound right does it that this is the whole thing this is the whole part of the case which really confused me knowing dog's behavior because i've i've got um like the our pointer for instance um wasn't a massive fan of the water but if i went in the water she would go in the water after me. You know, we yeah. went in a lake and I was really surprised when a lot behind me and the dog had followed me in the water and was, you know, quite happily like, you know, when I was throwing a stick for her and she was going in like further on in and a little bit of a swim. Um, and that was a dog that doesn't particularly like the water. So, and, and that said to me that if I went in, fell in or something, I think she would have, gone there and you know to be with me yeah um, 14 thank you yeah sorry about the other night um 
we've had awful weather down here and it knocked our internet out so we was unable to go live when we planned to so but apart from that we're all good <laughs> yeah it's been a crazy oh god it's been manic sort of few weeks really hasn't it we've just been there's a loads um going on because we've been um researching Evelina's case and then we've um just for those of you who've just joined us we've we've had some really good news and we've actually got a hold of the um the inquest so we're just going through that at the moment but um it's it's taken a bit longer because we can't just put it through the transcriber function um because it's um bilingual so it's trying to translate um polish sentences into english sentences and it so I'm, I'm finding myself just sort of sitting there and typing it out. <laughs> um, Dean, what's the finish like these days? What are the people like there now? They're very, very suspicious of any strangers. Very suspicious of any strangers. Yeah. They, they, right. I, I, I think it's to be expected, I think, after everything going so high profile. Yeah. They are, you know, if they if you're not known from around there, they look and watch you like anything, don't they? But they they all know each other, don't they? Everyone knows yeah. each other around there. And that's really obvious and everything. They're they're friendly, like you know the 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 people I spoke to were lovely, um. But you know they they definitely give you the side eye when they mm, don't know yeah. you. Uh, Bromfixer were uh, Willow's legs and belly even slightly wet. If they walked around the field, she was and she was running at that time of year. She would have had le wet legs at least. That's true because it was very um, ground frost that day, wasn't there? But they yeah. said all they said was that she was bone dry. Yeah, that that, that was reported in the paper because i I, th I think the earlier newspapers were the purest because they hadn't been um you know dictated to as, as you know there was no narrative or anything at that stage so it was they they are like the purest form and that was like literally hearsay from people who had witnessed or heard what was going on and what had happened and they then reporting to journalists yeah no i just remember it being reported that she was the dog was bone dry bone dry yeah and that that's what confused a load of people are you um, serious <laughs> people are like when she's she didn't know the guy that came from the red brick building <laughs> Well, she said, well, since learnt that he lives in Rowan Water. Yeah. Um, oh, well, I, I don't believe that for a moment. All this vagueness about that, I don't know who people are and all that. You know, that's bullshit. I'm sorry. They, don't, they all know each other. I've lived in villages that like similar size, um, and they all know each other. They all know each other, 100%. Even if you might not know their, their name, or you might not know their full first name and second name. Or you might you might even you like just know, the they, they probably got a good gauge for who the person is, what they do, where they live. Yeah. So I, I you know, round walking around where we walk, we don't know people like well enough to say are oh, we yeah, we but we know of them. You know, we recognise them. Um, Patterdale, there's literally been nothing else since she got found about Gaylord. Lord. Yeah, that's all gone quiet, hasn't it? As well, mm. she she must be due an inquest soon as well, actually. Yeah, unless they've probably done the, already done it. They might have already done one. Actually. Oh, they, they usually, they, they, it depends where, where it is and stuff. They usually, they can take a while. Yeah. But no, there's, there's been nothing, but again, they just say straight away that that was um, the biggest. Yeah. I think in her case, though, her behaviour was out of character for her. 
to have like left work and then she was running to, to yes. go to church and then they're doing like yoga pose that that sounded like it was it wasn't normal behavior for her yeah. again that's something that well, i'll look into see if we can pick up um any coroner reports of um you know dates of coroner reports or anything and find out yeah we could that have quite look. interesting to listen to as well oh 14 to keeping an eye out for anything on graham oh. con now too thank you will you let us know um and we will we can do a, um, an update on gainer as well again it's it's crazy isn't it how it's women that go, have been going missing isn't it it's just dean yeah pa still got the kids i think as far as i know i think i think he has yeah but there's no reason really at the moment for him not to yeah i think um and the house went on it was on the market and then it came off didn't it as well i think they took it off of the market it might be on the market quietly like if you know one of them yeah, things if somebody puts a bid in they do yeah, see, we was talking about that the other day, and like, obviously, but we're bearing in mind that Nikki's case was so highly high profile, and um, where they advertised it, it was like, I, I don't like if say if we was in that situation, I wouldn't want to do that because you could have anyone go into the house just to say, oh, I'll come, I'm interested in the house, just to go and have a look, and you just don't know who's going in yeah and um, what what they've said um about viewers is that they have to um prove that they've um that uh, yeah, they, they've got to be able to afford to, uh, the mortgage or the, the uh, you, sometimes you get the mortgage offer agreed in principle and that you get that as a a form from the bank and i think they're asking for that mortgage agrees in principle before they'll allow, allow a viewing yeah because that, that would just literally freak me out because you could have anyone go to it to say, oh, I want to have a look because we're interested in buying it or getting the mortgage on it. And you could just have anyone go there and they could have a good nose around and, you know, it would surprise me with this case. It really wouldn't surprise me if someone tried to do that. Yeah, that, that, that was um, on the... Um... On, on on the paperwork you know when you look through all the um the details i noticed that they they wanted um you know proof that you could afford to you know to to put a, a, an offer in before you they'd even allow you to go and view it so that oh, would be good. like um mortgage agrees in principle by your bank um yeah. to that level of money i suppose because it's not really a, it's not an it's an expensive house isn't it it's not something that a lot of people can afford no no exactly but yeah it just come to our mind the other day and i was like oh it just sent a shiver down my spine oh we were selling the house one time and we had loads of people coming in looking at, at our house it was a it was a victorian house it was a bit different and then um, we just had people just come in for a nosy <laughs> yeah which you do did you you do sometimes you go oh I'll go there and look at this house do you know, all my child's homes were bought by vicars after us. What <laughs> 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 mad fact. Yeah. Is it, yeah, volunteer, yeah. it's not up for sale, it's been taken off the market now. But yeah, Yvonne, it was a right move. And yeah, I just can't believe that it was put out there like that. Yeah, it, it's you know like i suppose like people were obviously having a look at the photographs of the house to sort of get an idea of what the house was like inside but yeah you, you probably would get people like time wasters get one and to just go there because of obviously what's happened with the family and everything yeah because i remember 
one of um, a house that I grew up in when we was kids. It was um, up for rent. <laughs> I went to go and have a look at it. All the memories there. And uh, oh. it's you know, nice it's, to do that, though, isn't yeah. it? Like, yeah, I think I, I do that. I think if one of our old houses uh, ever came up for sale again. Um, Ellie, yeah, you can choose if you have a um, for sale sign. That's right. Um, because um, I know my sister-in-law did that. She, her house was up for sale and she's just said, well, if someone wants to put an offer in, they can do. Um, the estate agent was obviously like, um, you know, they had the details in the office, but it was just, to, you know, make it less obvious, you know. And, and it was just... A, if it sold, it sold. If it didn't sell, she was happy to live there type of thing. She wasn't in a hurry to move. Uh, I didn't know that. I thought every house that was up for sale had to have a for sale sign outside. No. Learn something no. new every day. Yeah. <laughs> it helps, I think, if you want, because it's advertising it, isn't it? But then I suppose if you're not, if, if you're not too bothered, you know, you can just you put it up with the agent and um and then if someone comes and offers the right price and stuff then you know you can make that move but then you're not if you're not if you're not bothered you know you don't have to move yeah it's fine as well but no yeah. but yeah it's I was, yeah, um, that, that was put out I was a bit like whoa oh so um volunteer saying that um super super chuffer did a video didn't they scotty did a video and then it's got took off the market shortly after that yeah i think there were a few videos about it i think um i know it's that's our friend springer spaniel 14 we took him for a walk today and uh he was straight in the water he uh oh. it, he just reminded us like how he looks as well like of willow and seeing his mannerisms when he's when he was out and about and he was straight in the water we didn't even have to tell him to get in there so it's like oh we could talk about the willow the dog <laughs> yeah no it's it's um we just thought we'd do an update and everything because obviously we're quiet just because we're quiet doesn't mean there's nothing going on there never is nothing going on with us like there's always investigations going on and we've obviously got this um got managed to get the um evelina um transcription thing that i need to do and then once that's um finished um and we've got the polish parts um translated over as well we'll we'll give you the rundown on that but um, as per usual, we're not allowed to play it direct, which should make, makes things so much easier, but we're not allowed. We've got to um, make sure we don't upset anyone. So, But it's just getting that addi additional information. I know for a fact you'll find it fascinating. It's <laughs> it, it, absolutely, it's a crazy case, man. It's so mad. 14, he was actually really good. He shook himself dry away from us, so we, we didn't get wet. So that was nice. <laughs> he was like, I better shake myself over here, otherwise they won't take me out again. <laughs> but he was brilliant. Um, if I had brought it, it I would have it, it was half a um, luminal and a a, a diver dog. I was looking at Cadaver dogs um like just before we came live actually, because I we was just looking at you know. Because apparently they were used in the search, weren't they, for Nikki? And then the because the, the train to pick up um the, the uh, it's a it's a smell of human. I, th I think it's initially a um a scent that a human will give off um just as as the body dies. Yeah. But they was out, they was literally out in the water, what, straight away, wasn't they? Um, day one. Day one. 
but they don't always seem to be able to pick up the um the, the scent though because um I, I i don't know if people here are familiar with them the case it was gabby petito and brian laundry and they both died and uh, brian brian laundry killed gabby petito and left her um and then um he was in the everglades in florida um, and he shot himself, um, and but the, he just went missing. There was a big manhunt for him, um, but that's where he transpired to be. But they were searching the area, and they had cadaver dogs, um, and it, they're there, and it's like the tropics. It's so hot and humid, and um, the cadaver dogs didn't detect him. It was actually his mum and dad went for a walk um, and searched for him and found him in 40 minutes. He found his rucksack. Uh that was a crazy case has anyone seen that case it was it was a couple of years ago now yeah yeah we've seen that i've actually seen that one jenny <laughs> i've seen it my god <laughs> oh um, yeah, that we watched was a, that one yeah well what that that one is a perfect example of how social media did actually help find a person because it helped find gabby because there was was a big bertha blue and white bertha i think it, it was um she was part of the van life community and then word went out that they were looking for gabby and the, the white van and um she went through a, um a, a video that she that they, ju they just switched on to capture the, the 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 area they were in and she seen the van at the side of the road so they yeah. got an idea of um you know where gabby roughly was and then it was that they searched that area and then they found her within the day yeah hi amanda yeah you're fun obviously i know obviously when someone's in the water it's not until the body starts giving off scent that a dog can pick them up because they give off like a very specific sense mm. when after the body's deceased, isn't it? There's, there's yeah. something. There's it's like not straight. Not, yeah, it's not straight away. But um, he's a. Uh, you would have to. I would say when the body starts letting off some gases and starts decomposing a little bit, that's when the smell. That thing, so, because you have the search and rescue dogs, and there's two types. Because the, the the searching dogs, um, are, are trained to ones trying trained to find missing people, um, you know, after a, a disaster or whatever, and they detect a human sense, um, and then you know if it's like underwater or snow or a collapsed building, and then the cadaver dogs, um, they're trained. Um, to detect, um, you know, deceased or buried human remains. Yeah. And um, it's um, by um, bodily parts or um, biological fluids. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't really say what they actually. What what they actually detect. Yeah. I, I've got a feeling it's something to do with the hormones, um, or not, not hormones, um, enzymes, sorry, in your secretions, you know, so, the, you know, your body would secrete as it breaks down when it, when a person passes, but then you've got the, the uh, finding a missing person, they're looking for a living person, aren't they? Yeah. So the would be a little bit different. Yeah, um, Margaret, he has done, but what he's doing at the moment we don't know i haven't spoke to peter for a while um i have to try and catch up with him after the easter holidays yeah oh um, bless him he's been busy hasn't he because of you know he was doing a search for little xylo and then obviously i said poor xylo hasn't been found and yeah. i just feel so sorry for his family uh 14 is that on x oh, let's have a look not heard of him before but no it'd be interesting but it is impossible to know lossy everyone that drowns it's different like you say but this is just something different how it's happened 
yeah it's well i'm hoping that they find little xylo now that the the floods have receded haven't they um you know so i suppose it's just a case of just hoping that you know search teams are able to find but it, it's it's going to be quite a sad discovery isn't it it's, it's not really going to look like how he was yeah i'll have a look at that full time when we're finished is um, it on your youtube oh yeah it's definitely worth um yeah i i, I find um you know service dogs in general fascinating because it's ha like how well trained they can be I remember again, I got sniffed by the, the dogs at Manchester Airport. I, like, oh my God. <laughs> I was panicking because we're, we'd been out for something to eat and there's people smoking weed. And I'm like, um, oh, my God, I hope the smell's not on me from that. <laughs> <laughs> they, did, they, did, they didn't come up to me, thank God. I was like, oh, my God. Stop panicking. Is that Samantha Murphy you're talking about from Fixum? Oh, the Australian woman, yes, it's about the Murphy, isn't it? She's over in Oz. Yeah, they haven't found a body yet. Oh, it's so sad. But I, I did read somewhere that someone's been arrested and charged. Oh, yeah, look, um, Brumfix has said that, yeah. I just don't know, like, how they can. Imagine after the murder, but he's not to disclose where is where yeah. the body is. That I was is watching um, a program last night. Was it called? Is it Grave Se Grave Secrets? Yeah. yeah, we was watching a program. It's American one, um, Grave Secrets, and a boyfriend yeah. killed his girlfriend. Michelle. And buried secret. Oh, buried secret. Sorry, um, he killed his girlfriend, buried her somewhere in the Amazon, and he's in jail, and he's he's holding on to the fact that he's not going to tell them where she is, and he's going to take it to like his grave, because he can have that one little bit of control because he's been obviously found out and done and charged for it and put in prison, and it's just like how can someone be that? Arizona. Did I say Amazon? <laughs> Arizona desert. And it's like, I just can't see how someone can. Oh, oh just, it, it is wicked. Yeah. You just think that um, they've done, they've taken their life away. The least they can do it for the sake of the loved ones is, is tell them where their loved one is and then they can take them home and you know and bury them properly and everything yeah this you know, case about, must be what about 15 20 years old 15 20 years old and they still to this day don't know Yvonne, i was is. thinking like but just like the moors murderers isn't it because they he kept they kept um one of the burial places hidden as well and, and then um was it myra henley that were you know took them somewhere to go and have a look but that was all in vain wasn't it because the um there was a geologist talking about how the um the grounds can change over a period of time so it, it would have looked nothing like how it did back in the day but they should have come clean right at the start yeah they should be put in isolation until they disclose the location of the victim they should never yeah. be allowed because in prison you look at prison nowadays you know you get a life of luxury in there and yeah, uh, what you they should be put in isolation no one around them and just let them you know see if that works because just putting them in a prison at the moment is just never gonna exactly yeah they, they need to have some special punishment for people like that who are just you know still 
they've been that you know they've they've been found guilty that you know they're locked up and they're doing a sentence and then that they just you know they're getting all their orders because I was talking to a homeless man and he said um he said he, he was just about to go and commit a crime so he could go and get thrown in jail for a bit because it was better than being on the streets. Yep. And a lot of people that come out of prison, they come out of prison and they will cr commit a crime to go back in because they yeah. can't handle life out of the streets no more. That's, I've seen yeah, that happen so many times. Yeah, that, that, it, apparently that happens loads. Um, you know, they, they come out and they, they don't necessarily have somewhere to go and live as well. You know, mm. because sometimes like the family are not there anymore, and that they're just like you know, all the mates are inside, aren't they, and stuff, so they just want to go back, yeah, yeah. But this guy, um, on this program that we was watching, you know, everything pointed that he'd done it. He had her car, he had her driving license, which he cut up into pieces, he had her credit cards. He oh. had a false, he was under another name, so he had a new identification when he where he was living. Um, there was some other stuff that he, they had on him as well. And uh, yeah, he's just, I was like, it's just sickening. Hi, David. Hey, David, you okay? And the ladies and chatters. <laughs> Oh, I love it. it's nice to see you all back here again and stuff. I just hope you're all having a good Easter holidays. How many of you have been on the Easter eggs? Now, come on, be honest. <laughs> you know, yeah. chocolate. See, it's, not, it's not about chocolate for me at Easter. I love my roast. Same at Christmas. All the trimmings. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's nice. Literally in a food coma yesterday. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to my mum's. Um, my my mum um was away. She went away for a few um days with her, if her other half. So um, we're gonna go to mum's and have a roast um, on Wednesday. So not tomorrow. It's yeah Wednesday, and then that'll be good. Mm. And then the kids are going out with a great and a great grandma. So. Not just it, it, she's. I can't believe how well she's doing. Bless her heart. She's just got a heart of gold. Oh yeah, GI Joe stole one from the kids. Bless her heart. I, I want to be like that when I'm ninety. Just Luke super nan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she really is. Honest to God, like oh, she's like fit as a flea. She's look brilliant. So she's um so my my kids are sit like they're, they're gonna um see my mum and then they're gonna go and see the great the great grandma and do some um have, have some a few hours with her and then come back again and then, yeah I'm trying to resist the girl the Easter eggs ah! while eating a what's it sandwich instead I love what's it sandwiches GI oh. Joe because she she's not from England. She doesn't understand the Chris sandwich. She does not get it. She thinks it's absolutely disgusting. And I'm always saying to her, but you haven't tried it. Same with the chip butty. She can't get her oh. head around that either. Oh. And I'm always saying, but just try it. Just try it. It's the best thing you've ever had. I always love the bread, butter, with a bit of mayo, with the what's oh. it inside. Oh, my God. It's just like heaven. I'm so glad you said that from Vixen. Joe, you're missing out, see? Yeah. Oh, you need to try it, G.I. Joe. <laughs> oh, but no, I'm always saying, so, but you haven't tried it. Or it's like if you've got mouth. bread and butter and you put noodles inside of it, you know, it's all of those things. And I'm saying to her, see, look, I'm not, not weird. I'm normal. <laughs> Oh. But, yeah. oh, David, have you been poorly? Oh, I'm glad you're on the men's. Oh, yeah, right. I, I, um, I, li I like me Big Macs and stuff as well. The, I, there's a new McDonald's opens not far from us. So we went there the other day to go and test the Big I did the Big Mac test. <laughs> That's just the, the, the bench line, isn't it, for a 
knowing a good McDonald's or not, what's a Big Mac like? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh, what, what did I have? Um, I was I was at American friend's house, and um, she was she likes peanut butter and um, jelly sandwiches, and I was like, oh, that's just wrong. You just can't eat that together, and. Um, she she was like you just have to try it before you slag it off you know it's just yeah. you, she's from texas and so she's just like just it's just the great best neck ever so anyway i did and it oh I, i'm hooked now i am a fan i've got to say i really love it you've got the saltiness of the 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 peanut butter and then you've got like the sweet sugary taste oh it that's good but chip butties here in wales volunteer 100 oh, percent. love chip butties they are lush. No, Two hours not. of cooking and nothing left. That's always the way, though, isn't it, Ellie? It's like sometimes if I spend all day cooking something, by the time it comes to eating it, I don't want to eat it because I'm just sick of cooking. <laughs> oh. But, yeah. I know, I know, um, like, me and my partner <laughs> used to, that, that was our little bond that we would always cook together. We would always do like Christmas dinner. Jesus Christ, you know, we, we plan it for about a month before. Oh, we had like the cheese boards going. Um, you know, everyone used to come around the house and they'd always, you know, go in our fridge and steal. Oh, there's always food in there for everyone. And, you know, we'd always make far too much. And then, you know, you, you get like, boxing day don't you as well and there'd always be like um you make a curry out the leftovers and everything <laughs> i'm from talking about but, dogs we ended up eating something eating. that's well, volunteers fault for eating the what's it sandwich yeah <laughs> <laughs> like eating leftovers don't need as well or whatever you you do have a sunday roasting you've got dogs so dogs are happy as well aren't they I always used to make my dog a Christmas dinner at Christmas. It always have a little yeah. bit of anything. <laughs> yeah, we, we always used to um like like just because when you've got kids as well and you don't finish everything and then you just put it down and it would vanish. I've never seen food vanish, but it's like a magic trick. It just vanishes when it, the dogs get hold of it. Probably yeah. fix them, Joe. Get a crisp sandwich. You'll feel better. <laughs> oh. But, yeah, yeah gi joe we, definitely got we want to hit the gi joe's got to try one before we do our next live and then she can let us know the the verdict and the chip butty as well chip by oh yeah. chip bodies. i think that's how i got fat on chip bodies. <laughs> jackie just used my blender for the first time carrot and coriander looks a bit thick <laughs> is that soup you made jackie I, I, that's one thing, right? I, I always like to make homemade soup. My kids grew up on my homemade soup. Um, oh my god, Car carrot and coriander, and um, or uh, uh, the the best one ever is the um, when you know when you roast your, your tomatoes and peppers, and then you you make soup um out of that. Oh my god, it's lush. That is just. It smells amazing as well. The whole house just like when you when you go out and come back in, you can smell it cooking. It's Jackie, so nice. add a bit of um, stock to it. <laughs> a bit of flavoured water. It should be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, put a stock cube in it, isn't it? And then yeah. with some Rob water. Fixed, I'm exactly the same. I cannot eat a sandwich without a bag of crisps. I always I think, have to have a bag of crisp with my sandwich. I think it's how oh. we got brought up when we was little. Like, yeah, you know, when you go to school, different. when you pack lunch, you always have a bag. They like, always have a sandwich, bag of crisps, and something else. And since then, that's it. Oh. Especially if there's tomatoes in my sandwich, I definitely have to have a bag of crisps. In. Yeah, I, I dunk my sandwiches in my soup as well. I've made soup. Because <laughs> <laughs> I do that. It was like, that's gross. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's nice. But um, I caught my finger making homemade soup. And then um, me, me, my sister's mum and dad's in law were round. And, and he said, 
or did you how did you cut your finger on the car i was just really offended i was like no i said i made it from scratch i don't make that <laughs> soup <laughs> make everything from scratch yeah, I, I don't like spinach, spinach, um, what, there's um, no flavour in them. I made, I made spin, spin, what was it? Um, um, potato and leek with spinach, right? And it went up this fluorescent green colour, right? It looks gross. It was like radioactive looking. And then my friends come round and seen it. And they were like, what the hell are you giving your kids? Well, they, they were just like eating. Oh, they loved it. They were just like, this is so nice. You want some? And holding a bowl. Yeah, and, and you know when you're done, Gus, because they, they have about three or four bowls of it each. Ellie, picture this. I'm in bed watching True Fighters on the big screen munching my Big Mac meal. Oh. <laughs> Not much to watch, though, Ellie. You could just listen to us. <laughs> Yeah, it's, we we just thought we'd talk about the, the dogs and everything because obviously it, it, it's something that's been involved in Nikki's case, obviously, um, with Willow being there and um, and um, obviously the cadaver the, the dogs were involved in the search and it's not something that really has been spoken about a lot, really. And it's not something that got mentioned a hell of a lot anywhere in any of the reports either. And it's just strange the. The, the the dogs didn't detect anything, isn't it? Yeah, no, it is. Because it kind of <laughs> like to look, look at how we... so many foodies on this channel. Honestly, oh. you talk about food, everyone bonds, don't they? <laughs> Come on, Michelle, tell us what weird Polish food Joe has. Said. Oh, there's God. loads. But one, what's that one that, what's that right. one that gets, like the pepperonis again? I've forgotten the name of it. You know, that it's like a big, long sausage. Oh, it's so nice. Oh, yeah. But this one, right? Describe soup for me. How would you eat your soup? It, it's creamy. Yeah. It, yes. It's, Polish soup is like water to me. We always say this, don't I? It's water. And that's not soup for me. It's got to have body i'm not a big soup for eater anyway there's only one polish soup that i eat but polish soup is like broth water with a bit of noodles in it and i'm just like Ugh. <laughs> oh no I, I my my soup that i make at home is always like really thick that i oh well, my, my daughter's coming hello and the what's the other one is it Alive. bigger yeah. that you cook it Big off at Christmas. Polish sausages are the best. I, I you know, sausage. I love, I do like Polish food, but yeah, big off is like the cabbage, and um, literally, I, I at Christmas, I always walk in the house and I'm like, you're cooking big off, aren't you? Because it just stinks the whole house out. But she loves it, absolutely loves it. Is that the one I like? The big ash, the the, the like pap pepperonis, but they're like in, like lo the long, the, like curly whirly ones. Oh, there's loads of Polish sausages that I love. They're just they got more flavour to them. Like pepperoni, pepperoni yeah. type. Oh, the um, Kabanowski. Kabanowski, that's the one. Yeah. 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 Oh. Potato and leek, favourite. Yeah, with like cream, cream. <laughs> yeah, you've got you've got to have cream in in the in um, leek and potato. That's the law in our house, anyway. Yeah. Brad Vixen had a soup in Russia, and it was like dirty water with a lump of lard in it. <laughs> mm. Oh, my my granny used to make um make um soup. She taught me how to make soup as well. But in fact, both my grannies did, um, because in Scotland, you know, they have the Scotch broth and everything, and they put lentils in it, and you have to leave the lentils to soak overnight before you do it, and, and, and you know, a lot of thought goes into it. And then me, um, one of my grannies used to go down the butcher shop, and she used to get the um, the you know, the the bone, and she'd boil the bone and make her own stock for it as well. So it's like a hundred percent like 
whole maze. It was always so nice. But I've got to admit, I do use the Oxo cubes and <laughs> sort of <laughs> in mine. But um, I think, um, everyone's going to be coming off our live and going to eat after this. That's <laughs> but leave the kids' Easter eggs alone, people. <laughs> oh, for sure. Oh, it's so hard though, isn't it? When they're like winking at you, they're like, "Come and eat me." You know, you want me. <laughs> David, soup should have consistency. It's consistency of cement. The spoon is able to stand up. <laughs> Yeah, you've that, got to chew it. Like my, soup, yeah. <laughs> my my leek and potato soup's a bit like that. And then it and it, if I put the um spinach in it, it's also like bright green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh it's it, I, I make it for Halloween now because it's 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 it is just a bit of a fun food, but the kids still love it. But um yeah, oh, the thing is though, it's soup. Apparently, um, I was watching a dietitian, and they were saying that what it, soup holds itself in your stomach, so it makes you actually feel like nice and warm and full for longer. It don't. If I have it's... soup for dinner, I'm always hungry like an hour later. Yeah, I think it's in your mindset. Yeah. Oh, but my it, probably with my soup, it's because it's so like. <laughs> It, you can stand just your, your spoon up in it. It's proper. It, 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 we we have it. We do. We sometimes water it down a bit, but it, it, it's like getting all your veggies into the kids. You know, if you get if you to say to the kids like, "Oh, um, here's a big plate of veggies," and you know they they eat a few of them, but when it's in soup form, they just go for it, man. I've never seen anything like it. You know, when it started off um, when I was weaning my kids because they're not far apart in age so I was kind of just like weaning them both um weaned one and then the other one needed weaning and I found soup was just the easiest thing to make it's oh it's, it's, and then I've, it smelled amazing as well and you know when I was on a diet as well and it, it, was, it was just all around good but yeah oh, oh, intermittent fasting <laughs> That's two days in a row. I've broken it within hours. <laughs> that would be me. Diet, yeah. Oh. I I did lose weight on that, you know. That I did do that for a bit when I was working um in the bank, but it was really hard on your fasting day when it was lunchtime, you could smell the food and you, I I'd have to go outside and go for a walk or something because it was just so hard to sort of fast on your fasting you know, yeah you you're allowed so, so many calories aren't you but it's very minimal isn't it yeah i don't think um a what's it sandwich is in on that though no <laughs> oh, Jackie, so. got crusty tiger bread to go with it in a bit mm. Tiger, tiger bread is I have to be careful with bread though because I get glutened really easily. So I can only have it every now and then. I think I think the crusty tiger bread though is the bomb. It's just so nice. Whoever invented that is oh it's just amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's like that that's a proper treat, is going and get out having that, especially when you've got the soup as well. Yeah. My mum makes nice soup as well, actually. Nice. She'll probably have soup. She'll probably have soup when I go there. Yeah. <laughs> that and a roast after. Oh, you will she says. Stuck. She says whenever we go there, her um, her soup vanishes. <laughs> 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 so she just leaves it on the hob, and and then we we just go and like heat it up, and then you know, and then have some, and then you know, and then the girls, you know, go and get get some as they want it later on as well. Just like literally, just vanishes. <laughs> Angela Gore, I hope Peter does have continued courage to keep his word. I think he will. I think yeah. he will go all this way, all the way. I think he's just negotiating a very, very difficult situation at the moment where I think that, you know, in order for him to make the images public, um, he's probably going to need to have permission from Nikki's family potentially. Yeah, I believe that's what he's probably trying to do at the moment. 
Yeah. It's 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 difficult, but um it's gonna take time, but I think we've all just got to be patient with it, you know. It's it's not something yeah. you can just say right here because you've got to remember that Nikki's family, you know, they're gonna see these as well. So he's got to be respectful for them as well. Yeah, or respectful to them, should I say. That's I, th I think it'll be, um, yeah, I, I, it, he's full of surprises. It'll just be one day and it'll just be out, won't it? No, yeah. and Peter, we'll just sort of wake up one day and then, you know, th there'll be a report out and it'll all be there type of thing. And he strongly believes Peter will be sabotaged. I hope not. You know, he's he, he's a man of integrity. I think for him. he does a lot of, you know, he he, he does search and recovery, and oh, it, it's a hard job. I I don't know how he can do it. It I I could I don't think I've got the strength, the character to do that to deal with. <laughs> things I doing. had to pause. Sorry, but when I put it on catch up, I put it on one point seven five plus speed, and every time you girls laughed, it sounded like my soft babe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the my stuff. Oh, I'm the my babe. <laughs> Everyone's gonna go back now and put it on one point seven five so they can hear that. <laughs> oh, oh. brilliant! Just imagine just going <laughs> when you see things up and go squeaky. You don't. <laughs> oh no! Oh, don't. Oh. Yeah, I had um, the giggles the other day, wasn't I? Woman laughing me off. I, I can't remember what we were talking about. No, I just couldn't get any words out for about half an hour. It was just, <laughs> thank God that was off camera, you know, not on on the live. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't understand why the family or Emma don't want to know the truth. I think they've been brainwashed. That's my feeling. I feel that you know, like I, I think. They been traumatized by it all yeah. a lot as well i think going through what they've gone through it's be, it must be traumatic for them i honestly believe that they might have like a form of ptsd after everything that they, it's gone on you know in the bigger picture of everything yeah like um, i said you know they've not only just had to deal with the fact that nikki's gone missing and and passed away they've had to deal with everything else that's come along with it yeah, it, that's it. Really, it's you know, have a lot of like personal information doxxed and everything. It's not nice, is it? No, Jackie. It Peter really... will make sure he's dotted his eyes and crossed his t's before going public. I would think, yeah, and he will make sure everything is in place before he goes public with this. Yeah, I think. Um... He's got to do it in the right way. It's his business at the end of the day, isn't it? And but he, he's a man of integrity, and I think he wants to get the truth out there, um, and and say what really happened. But it's just and, it's uh, a nightmare for him. Just had continuous faith in him, yeah, because you know we do believe him. Yeah, there's people out there that don't. You know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But, yeah, we do believe him. Yeah. Obviously, I knew of Peter before Nikki's case because he, he found a, a missing boy around Kent. And, um, you know, I've already heard of him, so I know what work he does and how good they are at it. Yeah, fourteen. Yeah, I yeah, like I I don't know what pressure the family are under, um, and what they've been told, and whether or not they've been told just not to make any further comments on anything to do with what's happened to Nikki. And you've um, got to remember, they have been under Lancashire's wing, if so to speak, haven't they? Oh, yeah, it's, it's you know, obviously controlling yeah. 
aren't they? And the fact that they have well and truly royally effed up. It's... It must still be really hard for them. I'll tell you when, you know, I, I lost my partner and I know that like, you know, we're still, we're still dealing with it all, you know, emotionally now, but I couldn't talk. I wouldn't be able to talk about it for two years. The first two years, there was no way I could, I, I, I would literally start talking about it and I burst into tears. I couldn't talk about it without crying. And I had to go through therapy Um and basically what I do now is I have to um, detach myself, I suppose, from what's happened. I suppose like as if you're talking about someone else, although it's happened to me, that was the only way that I, I'm able to talk about it without sort of crying, but still get upset about it to this day. You know, you still have dreams, you wake up and, you know, it's still very much there. And I think that's what, Nikki's family must still be going through right now and time flies as well when you like that as well it got, the time just goes so quickly yeah um, Nikki's family has had time and opportunity to feed the images Nicola deserves a voice and justice I hope Peter will have the continued courage to be her voice I believe he has you know he's yeah. not only um having to want the truth out there you know he's it's his reputation as well well this is it really it's you know it would have been easier for him to say nothing wouldn't it yeah you know if he was selfish and didn't, didn't give a damn then he would just be quiet about it and leave it and you know move on but he it's it's important to him to get the truth out there and it's definitely not the easiest option for him you know in terms of his career his business and everything else but he is just probably being advised by a lot of people right now yeah Fourteen. Um, i agree the casey the solicitor lanks police force I can imagine pushing the accidental angle constantly, even subconsciously, it would have been very easy to push down that certain path. Exactly. It's yeah. no criticism on Nikki's family at all. They've been following her on it. Yeah. And Yvonne, about um, Nikki's daughters will be traumatised as well because they've had, not only have they lost their mum, but they've had all like the press and um the public um following their every move and you know the their friends in school will be talking about things that they overhear their parents saying or they, they you know even if you shield the girls from it all their friends are still hearing it all raw um and they're getting older now as well um you know and it it the more the, the age the more they're going to understand what's happened to them and what's happening still um and i i i think i i, I i'm pretty sure they will have gone through some bereavement counseling i'm sure that will have been offered to them yeah the thing is at the moment they're still young <gasps> oh excuse me um <laughs> so <laughs> <pick up there. laughs> just come out of nowhere um they're still young so Bless you. at the moment they're not at that age to deal with it like they've dealt with it in for the age that they are but it'll be when they're in the teenage years and a little bit older and they'll be able to search for stuff mm. and have their own mind i think that's when it's gonna be it's gonna hit them hard yeah, because they're gonna they're gonna be like obviously told what's happened, and then I suppose as they get older, they're gonna realise more that um, there's an element of doubt about that, and yeah. they'll start looking at the facts and thinking for themselves, and they'll make their own mind up, um, and they'll also have their own memories of it as well. Yeah, because they will. From their perspective, you know, they they it was their mum you know and, and they'll have like all the memories 
um, of home life and school life and the mum and what the mum's character and everything and that they will it'll be like doing a jigsaw puzzle in their minds I believe you know putting it all together what what they've been told and then what they've found out um and then what 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 they've witnessed themselves all that they, they've got to make sense of all that it's, it's a lot it's a lot yeah you, you know, know my children have lost a parent and it's hard and you know i've got an arrangement going with school that um you know basically my kids can get upset about things at any time and you know i'll just phone up the school and say look they're having a mental health day today sometimes it's just one of the my daughters and sometimes it's both and sometimes um you know they, they want to go into school they, they might have a bit of a wobble about it but they want to go in and be with their friends and then other times they want to be at home with me and talk about things or just you know be with me and we'll we'll, we'll go and talk about it but we'll do something to take the minds off it as well and then yeah. we still have an option of further counseling as well that um you know we can go down but um the girls might They've, they've done counselling, they had counselling, um, you know, within a couple of months after it all happened. Um, and they, they don't, they, they, any time it's, I've asked if they, they feel they need it, they, they said not at the moment. And they seem to be okay with the fact that they can, you know, they've got me to talk to and they, they, they're still in contact with everyone who was there before, like, the dad's family my family um and and everyone is consistently around them so that the, you know so they've got everyone of his everyone to speak to about it yeah. which is really, really important i believe anyways you know so I, I hope that that's what nikki's girls have got as well yeah i hope so um 14 it's just horrendous for nikki's family every single one of them to have 24 7 msm following your every move and word tracing your social media history etc all while you're trying to find nikki it's awful and then yvonne said this is such a well-known case when they're teenagers they could get bullied by it and they could and this is the thing like with all the conspiracies out there of like and um, what they've been saying about their dad people could say well your dad you know done this to your mum and it's just things like that and they don't realize the impact that all of this is saying and all the impact that this will do to them when they're older yeah it, it's just heartbreaking so somebody said to my two once um some nasty horrible kids was like you haven't got a dad and um i went a bit batshit um and went and as always with the parents and i was like um i'm gonna make you aware of what your child has said and how it's made my, my children feel and you can either deal with it or don't deal with it but either way your child's got issues saying that why would your child even say that to them that is yeah. so awful um and that th they apologized and then eventually that kid came over and and said had a quiet word with, with my, got my daughters afterwards and said i didn't realize what i'd said you know and it, that's obviously the parents did have a word with the, the kids you know i i try and be diplomatic with um parents when i'm dealing with them and stuff but you know but i, I, I was angry about that um uh, that, that, would that's be, the worst that you? <clears throat> that's the worst um that's thing that's happened but in like in school if if anyone said that in school that would be quite severe that would get treated very seriously as well yeah. oh thank you angela you lo lovely ladies have a breath, breath of fresh air thank you as always oh thank you i know we're talking I know about it's got a bit things. different this time <laughs> ended up on food at one point but you know okay. we we try and you know be 
very careful about things that we say and we do look at you know things that impact them and kids yeah. can be so cruel mind you adults can be cruel as well but it's just it would be awful if those girls go through hell because of what's been put out there yeah i, I what what will probably happen as they get to teenagers um they'll they'll, they'll, they'll have a close-knit group of friends who have supported them from primary school age when all this happened and then as they migrate up to high school i can imagine there'll be a lot of kids that want to get to know them because of it, the high profile case that, that with their mum but then um there'll be this this group of kids that they grew up with they're, they're probably going to be quite close to those people forever yeah if they if they stay in the same area obviously um you know that that for me, I, I kept my kids, um, it, we moved house, but I kept my, my kids in the same school um, right up until they, they went up to high school age um, so that, that they could at least, you know, kept, they have that continuum, was it continuality? <laughs> you know, so <laughs> they, there wasn't a lot, they, there was a lot changed around home life, but they had the friends and they had the school and they had the teachers and they were amazing like you know i literally am friends with the teachers now i've stayed in contact with them because what they did for me they, they said to me they said we're, we're not just here for the kids we're a family in this school you know the primary school little primary school and they said we're here for you too and they phone they used to phone up and speak to me and check up on me as well, which was, you know, you wouldn't expect that. It wasn't their job. And they went above and beyond. I think we'll start me crying off <laughs> just talking about that. But no. it's um it, I, I, I'm hoping that that's what Nikki's kids have too. That you know, when they go to school, I think the kids that they, they're in school with right now, they're probably gonna be the ones that are, who are the rocks. Yeah. I just hope that you know they found some peace and strength in it and just and don't have to deal with what's happened in a nasty way. Yeah. You but you found that the sounds the of a hundred percent certain they're gonna get somebody, you're gonna get some idiot who says some not very nice things at some stage in their life about it all um and i think this is where counseling comes in a bit as well that yeah. you know that they, they'll, they'll learn to rationalize and realize that it's just what one idiot is saying um isn't what everyone else is is saying and i i think you know that they'll have like the support of their friends and the family just breaks your heart to think that they're gonna have to deal with something like that in life as well it really is it's it it's just awful isn't it but you just you know you know because it's such a high profile case and you know knowing humanity as it is there is going to be that little one percent or that 0.1 percent of people who are just going to think it's funny to say something nasty but i'm i'm sure like my i've i've coached my two and how to handle anything like that um and i'm sure that the people who are surrounding nikki's kids will probably coach her kids in the same as well i hope so i hope so yeah it is just heartbreaking but kids but can be cruel they can be really cruel yeah I just hope they got the strength to get through it. Yeah, that's just tell them to F off. <laughs> that's what teacher was as well. It's awful. Yeah. It's just um as they they still got another sort of couple of years to go in, in the school that they're in at the moment, so I think. Um no, because one's the same age as our daughter. Oh so with the she's, yeah she's in her last year at primary so 
Oh. But, yeah, one will be going to primary, whereas the other one will still be... Um, one will be going into secondary, whereas the other one's still going to be in primary, I think. Oh. I, I just hope, um, you know, that the, the, the teachers in the high school will obviously be... Um, first in what's happened as well and they'll have some sort of system in place in case any anyone says anything that's out of order and um I, like I know in, in high school my kids are in that the, they have got a quiet area upstairs and out the way that they can go if they need yeah. to so Unless, like you say because this was such a high profile case i'm sure all the school whatever school they would go to will know about this case and yeah and we'll know jackie poor nikki she would have achieved so much more in life and seen her girls grow up so sad this is where it's so tragic isn't it because you know um N nikki was I, I she, she was probably like a little bit older when she had the girls because she she would she would have been what 46 now yeah so she was maybe what 35 when she that, had the yeah, about 34 35 yeah so she's probably spent all her life wanting the kids and then she's had the kids and then this has happened and that you know because i'm a similar age i i I'm, i was born in the same year as nikki and uh, my girls are a little bit older than her her girls and you don't that's that when you have the kids that when you're older you kind of always live your life like looking forward to can't wait to be in a mom and i'm going to do this for my kids and that with, with the kids and when things like this happen um you know like I, i'm i'm here and my partner's not and it's not how you plan out things is it you know no, no <clears throat> you, you your expectations are always going to be that there's you know there's going to be two parents around even if things if you split up or whatever they're still they still got the two of you there so it is really really hard you know and it's hard on the kids as well but the, the the best thing to do is just to be open and honest with your kids iphones anyway and always be available for them as well yeah no exactly um you know you know i know full well that nikki's probably up there looking down and watching over them for, for sure in a spiritual way isn't it should be definitely I, I don't think any spirit of you know any of us would rest until they know that their kids are okay and everything and you know i i believe that um my daughter's dad's with us always at all times and i've been told it. i've you know I, I i know some people don't believe in spiritual stuff but i do um and i've been told by psychic people uh, you know that details which they, they will they could never know th things that literally shock you and um you know when i've got 100 percent faith i know I, I believe that he is still watching down on me and the girls oh yeah and, and always will be yeah and, and it, <clears throat> you know it gives you a bit of peace of mind thinking like that as well doesn't it it really does yeah you just because what you know what i got told was i was shot so i was in a room with 200 and it was a quick message um and it it was about something that she you know she she names him in full um she said his full name and then his his nickname and then she said she gave me a message and it was just about something that nobody you know unless she lived in my house you would never know this thing and it was something that was so important for me and my partner as well wow it was because um she was learning to play the piano and that was the last present he ever he got her a keyboard so that was the last that that was a present that was waiting for the girls um when it when he died um and that was the last present that they ever got and she was like in just teaching herself in a room and then asking me for a little, little bit of help i play the piano by ear i taught myself and um, she was doing the same. 
and you just and you wouldn't know that if you unless you lived here you wouldn't wouldn't know and she just uh, just literally just decided to do that just before i went and she still, she still has a go now but yeah amazing it's crazy. It was really it blew my mind a bit. Started crying and that. So I think there's a few other people who were um, knew me um, in the room as well, and they were all a bit up, you know, blubbery when I told them what was um, said and the significance of it. But it's uh, yeah, just having a faith really. But a hundred percent, they could be watching down on a kid. Yeah. No, you know, it's. Just... I just hope that they find some peace and learn in a way their own way to deal with this and and get through life. Yeah. But yeah, yes. um, we've been going what hour and forty five minutes, so I think. Yeah. We'll call it a night tonight because obviously it's Bank Holiday Monday. Back to normal tomorrow. <laughs> for some yeah oh that's it yeah it's, it's a non-bank holiday day but yeah jackie it's very it was a very specific info i got there that, that's just something that you can't just like look at a person and make up that was something that you'd you'd had to have been in my house at just you know leading up to that when i went and, and the lady who said it was amazing as well but um you know the that's volunteer thank you for joining us yeah thank you so much um but yeah um i think i'm gonna i've got more chocolate to eat here <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna go and raise a couple of like minutes Easter eggs so much. i said to my daughters and was like i like fruit and nut bars and they've gone and got me a fruit and nut bar so i've actually got half of one left here yeah. i'm blaming john fixon for this i'm hungry now <laughs> 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 and i can't go to sleep until i've eaten but yeah, but we've, we've spoken about fluffy animals. Um, okay, not rabbits, but doggies. But um, <laughs> yeah. we've spoken about chocolate and then not chocolate. <laughs> oh, we had a bit of everything and, to it again tonight. Oh, so yeah, we've, we've had a, a bit of an hour of catch up. But um, yeah, well, when we come back, it will be with um, Evelina's catch up. Um, so there will be a lot of information to come which has not been put out there so it'll be a first yeah. for all yes i'm looking forward to it well, but thank no, you, thank you. yeah us. thank you for joining us guys it's you know i know it's been a bit of everything tonight but it's nice just to have sometimes just a nice chit chat about random stuff yeah especially that's... when some of the streams are quite emotional um but yeah it's been nice to catch up with you all yeah awesome. i think it is nice it's just to sort of chit chat because i think when we come back with evelina it's going to be sort of like a lot of info to um give out and we can't always interact with chat when we're doing that because we're reading so yeah. it's kind of like <laughs> you're getting a bit of chit chat with us now and then when we come back it'll it'll be you know go through evelina's case and hopefully informative and it is linked Thanks, yeah, hit the like button, everyone, please. But yeah, no, thank you for joining thank us you. tonight. Um, can, I, can I just say as well that there's like we've been going through a bit of a crap time at the moment, and people uh, who are there in chat right now have been absolute such a support, and we really, really appreciate it. You've had our back so much, and it just thank you, thank you so much for being there. And you guys yeah, know who you are. Lot. It really does. Yeah. It does mean a lot, you know, it hasn't been easy. Oh, thank but, you, David. But yeah, we knowing that you guys have got our backs and you know, you're loyal to us, it means a lot. It really does. It's, um you know, it 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 just means the way I'll do I'm not oh god, I'm gonna stop getting around you know, stop it. <laughs> um, it has it's been it's been a bit of a it, you know a bit of a shit show really hasn't it and it's yeah. just um and you know we can't really elaborate on it too much but um there's been people who have gone above and beyond like really been there and um, you know and inboxed us and stuff and just really been there for us and helped and just want to say thank you 
<laughs> Jackie, we've got your fronts as well. <laughs> Don't like the boobs getting away. <laughs> but no, Thank we you. do. We do really appreciate it um, a lot. You know, it's yeah, amazing all your support. It really um, is. It's not unnoticed, and you know, and you know, it it just absolutely keeps us going, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It does. Well, and um, once we come on and speak to you guys and see you all here, it's it's you know, it's nice because we just have a laugh and talk about what's it sandwiches. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> the small, the small talk's cool, isn't it? Really, you know. You've got to have a little bit of, um, you know, chit chat in life, isn't it? It's not all, if it's serious all the time, isn't it? it? You know, it can be a bit kind of depressing and everything. So you get to see yeah. our personalities a bit. See who we were talking are. the other day, weren't we? That saying it's um, Coronation Street, Cummy Stand as well, our channel, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> get a bit of the drama going on. The real life you stuff. Won't, you won't, Brum Fixon. I might actually do a live one day. Of what what's what sandwich? What Christmas sandwich? Uh, Chris sandwich is yours. <laughs> oh. Cupcake. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Her nickname's Cupcake. Yeah, um, my nickname's Cupcake. Yep. And I, we were talking about this the other day, weren't we? I'm Fluffy. <laughs> and then we've got GI Joe. Um, GI Joe. We've got names the other day, but. Cupcake stuck now, hasn't it? As well, from fluffy as well. When people yeah. are messaging me, um, <laughs> like it's probably fluffy now, I'm going, Oh god, <laughs> let's get used to it now again. Yeah. Oh, but no, but yeah, brilliant. So, enjoy the rest of your bank holiday Monday. Um, yeah. have a lovely week. I'm thinking, well, I'm having a look, and it's looking a bit of a washout this week. Oh. Typical bank holiday weather, isn't it? As they say. Yeah. Well, mind you, it's meant to rain today, and it didn't. Yeah. We normally get ours at our rain in the evening at the moment, and then Saturday, I was like, "Oh, it's seventeen degrees. Looks nice and nice and dry." Had a look, and it's like warning for gusty winds, and I'm like, "Oh, I'm literally rolling on for summer now." Oh, Angela, yeah, you're right. Nikki, Nikki's daughter does. Nick, Nikki's daughters deserve the truth. So, um, and you know, as, as adults, um, they will feel let down by um, the mummy didn't did not get justice. We we just hope that they they get the truth and it, it, things get investigated properly and impartially. That's what I want. I don't know. Yeah. But no, we will we'll put it up in the community chat when we go live again next. Yeah. And um put it up on our Facebook as well. So that's it. Yeah, we do. Well, yeah. well, thank you for joining us though. It's been great to see everyone on here today. But that yeah, is. we'll we'll be a bit more organized next time as well, because it, it's gonna be um we're gonna need to have all the slides ready, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> You know, we love our planned lives. <laughs> but um, no, I think I think uh, it's interesting and it's something a bit new as well. Um, you know, we you know we read the newspaper article that got shared around by every um, sort of chain of newspaper going. So um, you know, this is elaborating a lot on what happened there. We have a Facebook page. Um send us an email on true finders to let us know your name and that and i'll send you the link yeah that's probably the best way to do things yeah. isn't it yeah it's, it's just with all the the shit show with stuff, we're just having to do things a little bit different yeah We've hid it and it's everything at the moment. So, yeah, yeah let us know. The true finders, it's, uh, true finders email is truefinders983 um, at gmail.com. We'll send you a link for it. Yeah. So if you drop us an email on True Finders and then we can send you the link so you can join. But, yeah, yeah. we're having to be very, very careful who's joining at the moment. <laughs> yeah. But it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I, oh, 
it's it's just been a crazy sort of few weeks, hasn't it, and stuff. Mm -hmm. but, yes, emotionally. You, know, <laughs> you have a, you have a, a channel on here, and and it I think it affects things so much in in, in your personal life. <laughs> I know it's crazy, That's, isn't it? Yeah, but we are just so like, grateful for everyone who's been there for us because it really has made a difference. Yeah, no, we do really appreciate your support. So, yeah, right, um, Yvonne, don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and don't have oh. nightmares. Yeah, but, yeah, no. Thank you, everyone, and we will see. We will see you soon. But yeah, yeah, have a nice week. Yeah. Take care. Enjoy time off. Take care, lovelies. Bye. Bye.